AI will take your job eventually, but there's still time, so let's explore. It's not going to replace your job entirely right away, so relax, we have some time, but it is going to start changing. We've hit this inflection point with, a, uh, with this technology, and it is going to start changing things relatively rapidly to the point where I think 10 years from now is going to look way different, way more different than 10 years ago looks to us now. Let's take a look at some examples. 1985, this is what a video game looked like. Today, this is what a video game looks like. We are in the 1985 version of the AI, where video games kind of took off after Oregon Trail. People started buying computers so they could play video games on them, etc. Nintendo NES came out in 1986. This kind of thing is about to go off like this, just like video games did. Uh, and imagine 20 years from now, you know, if, if right now the tools you see like chat uh, uh, GPT were to be the Oregon Trail of the future, and we, we see like where things we could go, just imagine. So I think it's very naive that people are saying it's not going to take your job. It will take your job. Our jobs as we exist will be different, but it's not too different. Like think of the job you have now. Chances are it's not the same as it was five or 10 years ago anyway. It's just that the change and the, the, the kind of change we're going to see is maybe a little bit more. You're used to changing more than you think you are. And if your job hasn't changed, then you're probably at the highest risk of anybody because those kinds of things are the simplest things for computers to, to take over. Anyway, here we go. So that we're seeing this inflection point. Uh, we can see that technology gets better and better with time. AI is an exponential technology, so it gets even better as time goes on and the incremental leaps it makes from year to year are higher and higher. So it's, it's not a big jump to say, eventually the job you work today, as you know, it will not exist in 20 years. Sorry, it probably won't exist in 10 years. My job probably won't exist in 10 years. I'm a software architect for software that you probably use, but um, it'll be different. There will still be things we make uh, and there will still be problems to solve. It's just that things will get a lot cheaper and uh, the amount of things we can make will be much better, higher quality. So we're at this revolution, you know, uh, I'm a Hamilton nerd. I, I love that musical. Uh, there's a couple themes in here. Revolution is happening. Um, history is happening. We're really privileged to be here at a time when history is going to change. And this is going to be an inflection point that I think 100 years from now, people are going to be like, wow, 2024, 2023, 2024, 2025. That was a really exciting time to be alive um, and so much change. So if history is happening, uh, what's the best way to make it to, to thrive? Um, and I think that's to, to ride the wave, to get cutting edge and to predict the future, invent it. So you are in a position, since you're watching this video, to get on this wave, learn with me, and let's start shaping this to make AI a more human endeavor, enhancing our life, bringing flourishing. Um, because if we leave it up to somebody else, we may not like the results. There's a great book that I, I'd recommend. It's called Range and Why Generalists Triumph in the Specialized World. And I think it's even more true, the themes of the book, than, uh, than it was when it was written. Because AI right now is really good at specialized tasks. And we'll, we'll get into some later in the video. But this, uh, this, the theme here is that uh, or one of the stories and anecdotes in the story is that when uh, AI started taking on um, chess masters, the chess masters got beat. Um, but then the chess masters thought, this thing is really just really good at tactics, not strategy. What if you gave me uh, an AI companion that did the tactics for me while I directed the strategy? I could beat the AI. And that is true. For a while, the, the team of the chess master and AI tactician could beat the just the straight up AI that was called they called them centaurs when they were doing these tournaments. Anyway, it goes into it in the book. It's worth reading. Um, and I, I think we're going to have that kind of phase for the next five to 10 years while AGI is coming about. So we have this time where centaurs will be a very powerful pattern 
uh, to use. So the idea that you can be the strategist, the generalist, and kind of direct your uh, tacticians to help build the things that you want to build. And I think there's going to be a whole new science of AI organizational theory um, that we'll get into in future uh, videos. But ultimately, this is not something to be afraid of. AI is giving you superpowers. Why would you be afraid of superpowers? Maybe because you're afraid everyone else is getting the superpowers. I'd say well, use what you can not have now study, learn, use to use those superpowers so that you can start affecting the change and influencing the world in the way you want it to be. I think we all need to work together. One of the reasons I'm starting this, this channel is so that you and I can start working together and bouncing off ideas to bring about human flourishing with this new technology. I do think there is a risk of, of this going the wrong way, um, but sitting on the sideline does not limit that risk. The only way we limit that risk is working together uh, as society to shape these technologies in a way that bring about human flourishing. And I think we, we have some philosophy to do to figure out what we mean by human flourishing, how, how do we, what do we want in our society when we have essentially limitless problem solving. Um, and I think that's, that's a really exciting time to be in. We all get to shape that. And I'd love for you to shape that with me as we explore the ins and outs of what's changing in this revolution. All right, so here we are on Suno. Um, check it out. It's got a home screen. You can see what everybody else is making. These are all songs that the, the AI created um, and other people are creating through the AI. Let's make one real quick. All right, I'm going to do a pop song about uh, going on a first date to an ice cream shop. Kind of a little fun uh, thing here. So let's let's have it create. And there's a free version. Uh, I pay for this, but there's a free version that you can make like five songs a day on. So try it out. I'll, I'll put the link in the, the notes uh, for this video. But as it's creating, what's interesting is I think it's doing using a couple AIs in succession. You know, that centaur kind of mentality where it's got a specialist, probably a GTP or an LLM making a GPT or an LLM making the, the words. And then it's got another model that's making the melodies and probably another model um, that it feeds those outputs into to compose the song. Um, I'd love to talk to the people who created this. If, if you're watching this and you, you want to share how, how you made this and how you used uh, the different models and stitch them together. Uh, we'd all love to learn from you. Anyway, so it made the song. It's called Sweet Delights. Let's take a look at the words. Oh, so it made some verses and a chorus, um, and it, it also made the cover art. Uh, let's let's ha listen to it. Sitting in the sun, feeling kind of shy. I got a little sparkle catching in my eye. Checking out the menu, all the flavors in a row. Smiling nights, sweet delights. Taking bites on the first day night. Melting hearts, picking art underneath all the lights. Silvering the flavors, making memories. We're dancing in the sweetness. You and me Now it's no Taylor Swift or Hans Zimmer or Lin-Manuel Miranda yet, but it is pretty impressive. It's better than anything I can make and probably better than something 95% of the world can make. So it's really kind of an interesting thing. We all have the superpower to make songs now. What other superpowers are we going to have in the next year and a year and a half, two years? What superpowers do you want to make? What kind of superpower do you want to give people? Uh, I think the models are in place where we need to start thinking about what superpowers we can build and how we build them and how that brings about human flourishing. What sort of thing? Because computing is at a whole new level of, of potency. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's just continue the conversation. You and I don't have to go through this revolution alone. Together we can explore these new ideas and shape them and shape the future. Um, and I think 
this is your call to action to start studying up, getting involved, and shaping that future with me. So like and subscribe. Let's explore these ideas together. Uh, you can find me as Tim Masterson on Twitter, and uh, I'll share a link in the, the bottom of those tools we, we covered today. Till next time.